fundraiser for the. Uh, remind me, when is the fundraiser for the uh, Romania missions team? Oh, that's Saturday, the July eight, July the eighth, and it's at that Dairy Queen, the one over by the Fresh Market. Everyone, that's put right. it on your calendar. So it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, Aaron, you've got our undivided attention. Let's go over that list of uh, people you want to invite to your graduation party. Okay. Well, first of all, Grandma and Grandpa Miller, of course, and Grandpa Stewart. Yep, that's fine. Dr. Kessler and Mrs. Kinzer? Mm-hmm. The Collinses and the Bakers. Oh, wait a minute. Don't invite Dr. Kessler. Dr. Kessler? But he delivered me, and... I, I know, I know. But after all the years we went to him, he turned me down flat when I asked him to buy life insurance. Oh, I remember that. He did turn you down flat. That's right. Well, maybe he already had life insurance. And he couldn't afford more? The man drives a Porsche. Yeah, a Porsche. Okay, okay, I just thought it'd be cool if... No big deal. Mrs. Kinzer, Mr. and Mrs. Collins, the Bakers, the Thomases... Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mr. and Mrs. Collins? Bob and Carol. Uh-huh, yes. Uh, we're not too crazy about them. You're not? But they're my youth leaders. <laughs> yeah, I know, and they're not bad people. But Carol made a comment about your mom's figure once, and... You know, mom's I just figure? Yeah, my legs. She said you had skinny legs, or? No, chicken legs. She said that I have chicken legs. Sometimes she's just tactless, that's all. <sighs> he was a great youth leader. Well, he's only human. Okay. The Bakers, the Thomases, Thelma Lucas, her sister Louise. Wait, the Thelma Lucas. Uh, honey, you probably don't realize this, but Thelma suggested that we take you to a psychiatrist. Remember when you cut off all your hair in fifth grade? But you did take me to a psychiatrist. Well, not because she suggested it. What does she know about raising kids yeah. anyway? She's never even been married. Then should I buy her sister? <laughs> Honey, her sister had an affair with a married man. I suppose we should just overlook that. She had an affair? She uses a walker. Oh, it was a long time ago. Before you were born. Well then, scratch off Thelma and Louise. Now I've got hardly anyone left. Oh, that's not true. Look. Grandpa and Grandpa Miller, Grandpa Stewart, Mrs. Kinzer, Uncle Marty, that's it. Five people. Make that four people. It's five, Dad. Uh, Uncle Marty is not coming, and that's final. Well, Dad, he's your brother. He's my uncle. He drinks like a fish, and he's not welcome here. End of story. We'll send him a picture. Um, okay. Oh, hey, what about your best friend, Amy? Amy did invite me to her graduation party. So? So you think I'm going to invite... Do you think I'm going to invite her to mine? But honey, forgiveness, forgiveness is, is what, what our faith, faith is all about. <laughs> good morning, everybody. And good morning to those who are watching online. Thanks uh, for those who are watching online for putting up with our technical difficulties last week. Thanks so much for that. Uh, we said, um, Bobby, Dion, and I, your, our um, associate pastor and I, we went up to in the mountains uh, last week, a couple weeks ago, and we were up in, uh, in Canada and in Glacier National Park, and I said we'd show some pictures of this. So to show you that normal things do not happen to me, I do not live a normal life, weird things happen to me, Here's some of the pictures. These are, these are actual uh, pictures that we took of some of the animals that we encountered. Go ahead and show this. We had several bear, uh, bear encounters. We actually had six. There's a couple of, couple of grizzlies. We had a, a moose encounter. There we, we saw a moose. Go ahead and show the next one, another, another grizzly bear. And then we, we saw there's a coyote up close. We had a, a wolverine encounter as well. And there's a, there's a black bear that was up close and personal. We, and I'll say this. There, were, there, was, there was one bear encounter you don't have the picture of, okay? Because we came around a corner. We hear a guy yelling, you're supposed to, you know, if you come around a corner, you're supposed to make a lot of noise so you don't want to surprise a, a, a bear. And we're hearing some guy way up there going, hey, bear, hey, bear, hey, bear. So we just don't know whether he's coming around a corner. But all of a sudden, I look around, and coming down the, the path just a little bit about where that exit sign is from us, even closer than that, was a bear that could burp these other bears right there. I mean, it was... It was the biggest thing. Imagine a Toyota Corolla that's coming down the path towards you and everything. So I will just say that uh, the grass will grow a little bit greener in that area 
right about, uh, right about there. It scared the mess out of us, so we don't have that picture. So I have all these, you know, encounters with six encounters with bears, some of them very up close and, and personal, and I did get attacked by an animal, okay? And, and I want you to, you know, this is, this is the animal that I got attacked by, viciously attacked, I will say. Go ahead and show that. There he was, right there. And we even have a clip of the brutal attack. So if you're squeamish, you do not want to see this. Go ahead. There it was. You saw that. You saw that, right? Well, that's no way to win a friend, Bull. <laughs> So we have a bear the size of Godzilla coming towards us. Nothing happens, but instead a chipmunk. I actually had to go to a, to a doctor up there for, for that. So, so kids, if your parents tell you never, ever, ever feed a wild, a wild animal, your pastor just showed you why right there is exhibit, exhibit A. But we had, a, we had a great time. But, you know, um, I was just, you know, thinking that, you know, we ha there's so many things that we struggle with as, as, as people, as human beings. And one thing I love about Crossroads is we're so incredibly different. We are. I mean, we come from all walks of life. We, are, uh, we come from a lot of different nationalities. We come a lot from socioeconomic, just so many differences, and I love that. Uh, young and old, we have that real, real great combination of all that. But one thing we share in common is we deal with the same junk. Right, and if I was, I've been about this for a while as a as a pastor, and really three of the things I think stick out to me more than anything that we struggle with, and that's fear, discouragement, and the other is dealing with what do we do when people hurt us? What do we do when people offend us? Because those are something that each one of us deal with. And for the next couple of weeks, we're going to look about how to deal with uh, with offense. And here's some of the insights of uh, about being offended. First of all, being offended is part of life, isn't isn't it? If you are a carbon-based life form and dealing with other carbon-based life forms, that you're going to be offended. You're going to be, there's times that you're going to be offended in life because why? Because the people we deal with are real human beings and they're human and because they're human, they, they make human mistakes. And something else is the people that we deal with, they're going to have to deal with us because we, we're human and we make mistakes as, as well. It's part of life. And Jesus said this in Luke 17, he said, it is impossible that no offenses should come. In other words, he's saying what? He's saying in this life, we're going to be offended. There's going to be times we're offended at, uh, at, at people. It's another, Jesus says this, it's impossible not to be offended, but it is very possible not to stay uh, offended. And the second, God bless you. And the second thing is, uh, there are two, uh, two different kinds of offenses, aren't there? There's real and imaginary. And what do I mean by imaginary uh, offense? This is something that every single one of us, again, can relate to. Have you ever assumed that somebody thought something about you? Or assumed that somebody did something? Or, they, or somebody told you something that somebody did or somebody said, and then you investigated, it was all blown out of proportion, and it was something that wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't true, wasn't real in anything, and you just go, okay. And, and how do you feel after you, you, know, you, you fall off the handle or you go, you know, you get your nose out of joint because of something that somebody said, and then you realize they didn't even say it or they didn't even do it? That's an imaginary offense. Then there's other real offenses, and these are offenses that, that people really did to us, that people really did hurt us, people really did uh, do something that, uh, that offended us. The third thing is the pain of... And there we go. Based on who offends us, the, the higher the expectation, the greater the offense, right? I mean, if somebody, if somebody bugs you, if somebody hurts you, you know, in traffic or somebody, something at a store or something like this, chances are it's not going to bug you really bad because why? You don't have very big expectations of that, of that person. But, but if it's somebody that you work with and somebody maybe that's a friend of yours, the expectation is higher and the pain is, is higher. If it's somebody very close to you or if it's somebody you very much admire or look up to in things and they hurt you, the offense can be really great. It can be very, 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 very deep. Another thing is we will hurt, be hurt by those we're trying to help and by those who are trying to help us. Um, if you've ever been to the Raptor Center in, uh, in Charlotte, this is a place that they take care of, uh, of, of birds of prey that have been hurt, that have been injured. And you've got hawks and owls and falcons and eagles and everything like that. I remember when I was there one time, they had one, one bird named Volta because that bird had hit a high tension wire, right? And another one, his name was Cessna. You, you can imagine what that, what that thing hit, right? So, uh, but what they talked about is, is that they would try to protect these birds. They would try to help these birds. And, and the birds 
it was just not a good encounter a lot of times because there was almost always somebody that had to hold these birds down and nobody enjoyed this. The bird didn't enjoy it. They were scared. They didn't know what was going on and the person didn't enjoy it because the bird is flailing around and they are very, very, very strong. And, and sometimes that what the, the, very, the person that's holding them down, even though they have these incredibly thick gloves, those birds can, 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 can hold on with 2,000 uh, pounds per square inch, if you can imagine this. So the very people that are holding them down, you can tell the people, they said, you can tell the people that help the birds out because as they're letting them go and waving goodbye, they're the ones with all the bandages around their hands. <clears throat> and in the same way, you know, uh, people are... People are going to hurt us that even care about us, that love, uh, that love us and care about us. I mean, any, any kid, we know that, right? We know that our, our, our parents are going to hurt us sometimes, even though they don't mean to, even though they're actually doing everything that they know how to try to bless us and try to encourage us, even by doing that. Like, think of what discipline is. Discipline hurts us. Discipline bugs us. Discipline is not fun. It's really not fun for anybody, is it? But we know that if somebody really loves us, they're going to hurt us either, you know, even sometimes as an act of love, they're going to, uh, they're going to hurt us. But other, t other things too, they're going to, uh, people are going to, uh, people that we are trying to bless are going to, uh, are going to hurt us as well. Again, any parent knows that, don't they? I mean, you know that, again, as they let the, the eagles gone and they see them soar off, they know it's going to be worth it. But there's a lot of parents in here that you're, you know, you have scars on your heart too, don't you? And scabs on your heart from being, uh, from being injured by the very people. Anybody involved in ministry, you know what that feels like. The very people sometimes you're trying to love and care for are, are some people that sometimes can, uh, can, can hurt you. Uh, but here's something too. If we look for reasons to be offended, we will always find them, won't we? I mean, think of it. We are going to see in life what we're looking for. If uh, a, a young man is going to see every pretty lady that walks by, young lady that walks by, because why? Uh, his antennas are up for, for pretty ladies. You can do the, the same thing with, you know, that if you're, if you're somebody that loves coffee, you have your antennas up for every coffee shop, right? If you like shop, every time you see the word sale, your antennas are up. You're going to see every single thing. If you like cool cars, you're going to see every cool car that comes around because that's what your antennas are up for. Whatever we're looking for in life, and if you're looking for whatever you're looking for in people, that's what you're going to see. If you're going to look, if you look for the bad in people, you're going to see it every time. You're going to see something good about everybody every time if you're looking for it, and you're going to be seeing something that can offend you every single time time if you're uh, if you're you're looking for it and uh, and I mean every day think of this every day if we're really looking for it if we're wanting it we have every day we have opportunity to be offended don't we and we have opportunity to be offended by our spouse we have opportunity to be offended by our, our kids by our parents by our, our brothers and sisters we have every day we have an opportunity to be to be to be offended by people that we work with we have p opportunity to be offended by people our neighbors we have opportunity to be offended by you know by people we go to church with every day of our life there are opportunities to be offended you may be offended right now because I'm talking about offense right and uh, so we, we have those, those reasons. Another thing is some people want to be offended. You go, wait a second, come on, who would want to be offended? But we know people like that, don't we? Every single person of, in here, we know people that it just seems like they get a kick out of being offended. They're always offended about something, aren't they? But I, I think there were two people that really, that, that a few years ago, that they, they were insightful people in their own life, and they understood this. There was one person that when I used to do counseling, they were taught, this happened within just a couple weeks of each other, both these people. And one person came up and she said, she said, my husband, I'm just going to be honest, is an incredible guy. He's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. But he said, she said, I'm offended with him all the time. And I said, then why? And she said, I know why. She said, I was hurt as a small child. I was, I was molested. And she said, I'm afraid of intimacy, and anytime somebody gets close, including my husband, I push them, I push them away. And I thought, wow. And there was another guy that he said this. He was, he was talking about offense that's something that he had with the church, and I'm, I'm talking to him. And he says this. He said, uh, he's, and he goes this. He goes, just time out. He said, I'll just be honest with you. He said, I'm looking for reasons to be offended. I said, why would you do that? And he said, because that may way I don't have to get involved. I don't have to be involved in the things. 
And there were two people that go, okay, I'm, I'm looking for reason to be offended because of different hurt in my, uh, in my life or things in my life. It also deflects attention from, from us, doesn't it? If we're always offended with somebody else, it makes it where we not have to deal with our, uh, with our own junk and each of us have our own junk. Another thing is how we handle uh, offense tells a lot about our spiritual maturity. I saw something, uh, you know, uh, just a, a few weeks ago, and there was a, uh, a little boy and a little girl, and they were little, I mean, you know, just, just four or five years old or something like that, and, and the little boy accidentally, he picks something up and he whacks his sister, doesn't even know he did it. So what do you think she does? She comes up, and the poor guy is just sitting there, and she just goes, push, right? And he's like, what? You know, has no idea what he's done, but what does now he have to do? He goes up and he pushes, he pushes her. She gets up and pushes him, and pretty soon nobody's happy. Everybody's crying and everything. And, and you know, we expect that from, from four-year-olds, right? But what would happen if you saw adults doing that very same thing? We'd go, we'd go oh, my goodness, are they, you know, are they immature? But here's the weird thing, because in our society, that's not acceptable. It's not acceptable to do that for adults to push each other in our society. But you know what is, is horribly acceptable? For us to talk about each other behind our back, right? And especially on social media. How much of social media is adults pushing and shoving each other? And somehow that's, and, but, but the thing is that is, again, just as, just as harmful as the, as the other. And, and if we get offended and then we go push and shove somebody behind their back, it shows about our spiritual immaturity. And if we, and if we cover over the offense, it shows something uh, too. Something else is wrong uh, responses uh, to offenses make us behave like ninnies. There's a great example of this in the Bible, and it's David. Here's the, the man after God's own heart, this incredible, incredible man. And there was a time that a man by the name of, well, here a little background is, in those days what they would do is, is uh, if there was a shepherd or, I mean, it's people that had big things of sheep, there would be these people that would kind of hire out and they would protect the, 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 the shepherds and protect the people dealing with the sheep. They were kind of just hired guns to protect them from robbers, to protect them from bandits and things like that. But what was assumed at the end of that is when they would shear the sheep, that from the money that they got, they would give these guys that were the protecting, that were the muscle, they'd give them a tip to thank them, to say thank you for, for the protection. And that's had happened. David's men had been protecting a man by the name of Nabal's men and, uh, and taking care of him, making sure they were okay. And, and cheering time came, and David said, hey, go get, go get our tip. And when his men came up there to, to get the tip, uh, Nabal said, who's David? And why in the world should I, should I give him a tip? Why should I do this? And the news came back to David, and David, man after God's own heart, one of the heroes of our faith, he said, strap on your swords, boys because we're going to go kill him. Here's this is, I mean, here it is, 400 guys, and they, he said I'm, you know, that they were going to kill every man and Nabal in, the, in that whole thing, all because David, man of God, got offended. We can do some really, really stupid stuff when we get uh, offended. And uh, wrong responses to offense, offenses will enslave and poison us. The Greek word for offense is the word scandalon. And it literally means to trip somebody up. It means to, uh, to, the, uh, to ensnare them. It's the bait that you put inside a trap was the scandal on, okay? So, um, and, and, so what, and think of it. That's what Satan wants to do when we get offended. He will make sure that we get offended all the time. He, he goes out of his way to make sure we are offended at, at something. And what he's doing is baiting the trap, right? He's baiting the trap there. And what's the purpose of a trap? To either enslave or destroy that which was in, uh, in, entrapped, and that's what he wants to do. Being offended, here's what it'll do. It'll poison our joy, won't it? Can you be joyful and offended at the same time? Can you be at peace and offended at the same time? Can you be happy and that at the, at the same time? And, and something, somebody said this, if we choose not to forgive, it is like us swallowing poison and expecting the other person to die. And another person, uh, and this is something, I, I, I thought of this, isn't it true that if we stay offended, the, 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 the pain that we have there, the poison that's in our heart and everything there is even worse than the offense, whatever happened to us. And that's why, why God wants us to deal with it and why Satan doesn't want us to. It will also steal and poison our purpose in life. And we're going to talk about more of that last week. Don't miss next week. It's going to be good. Uh, it will also steal and poison our relationships, won't it? You can't be offended in somebody. It's gonna, it destroys. It's the kryptonite in all relationships, isn't it? 
And here the Bible says this in Hebrews 12, 15. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Offense will always bring division. It will bring division in a family. It will bring division in, in friendships. It will bring division in a church. It will always do that. And here's what Proverbs says, says about it. An offended brother or sister is more unyielding than a fortified city. And we all have experienced that. And disputes are like barred gates of a citadel. In those days, they would put, you know, they'd, they'd put fortresses around, around cities. What would be the purpose of that? Obviously, to keep bad people out, right? But something else that I did not realize is this. It would also keep it if some of them owed money uh, to the city in there, they would not let them to come back in until they had paid everything in full. And how much time do we do putting walls around and because we're expecting people to pay a debt that they can't pay? Expecting them to pay a debt that they, what, what can they do? If they've offended us, how do they do that? In, you know, how do they even go back and, and unoffend, right? So we're expecting them to do some, and don't miss this. When we put a, a wall up like that, not only do we keep people out, we imprison ourselves in, don't we? We keep ourselves in that, that prison as well. And, and so what should we do about it? We're going to take a look at a few of those this, this week. What should we do when we face offense? First is we realize that Satan has a strategy for the offense. Understand that. This does, isn't just happening. Satan has a strategy. He wants something to happen in the middle of this offense. So does God. God wants us to go on ma uh, to maturity in that. Satan wants us to wallow in the offense and make, and, and make sure that it has, a, has division. And Satan's plan for your marriage is to bring division and bring an offense. Satan's plan for your, your whole family is for that to happen. Satan's plan for a church is for that to happen. Satan's plan for your team is for that to happen. No matter where it is, his goal is to kill, steal, and destroy, and he wants to kill, and steal, and destroy destroy relationships. And what we need to do is take a step back and realize, okay, this person is not my enemy. This person, my friend is not my enemy. My, you know, my brother, my sister, whatever it is, the, the relative, they're not my enemy. Satan's the enemy. And step back and, and, and kind of go, just go, okay, Satan is putting this bait in front of me. I'm realizing what it's going to do. If I take this bait, it is going to bring poison to my heart. It's going to take away joy in my life. It is going to, to bring division from the person that I'm offended at, and it's going to keep God from doing the work that he wants to do in my, in my life. Another thing is, second thing is to do for the vast majority of offenses in our life, we can shrug it off, can't we? We don't have to stay in, in that. Uh, and say this, say somebody cuts you off in traffic, somebody says something, something stupid to you. Uh, that, here's the reason, we can shrug that off because we've done the same thing, Right? How many times have we cut somebody off in traffic unintentionally? How many times have we said something stupid that we didn't mean to, you know, that we weren't thinking about what we were saying and it, and, and it offended them and people sometimes say the same thing. They say and do stupid things. They make mistakes. We make mistakes. Everybody makes, mis makes mistakes. And, but there are times that people do intentionally offend us, don't they? They intentionally go out and intentionally hurt us. And here's what the Bible says about that in Proverbs 19, 11. Here's the thing. Are we big enough to shrug it off? Uh, a person's wisdom gives him or her patience. It is to his or her glory to overlook an offense. Anybody can hold on to an offense. It takes a more mature person to let go of an offense. Any dog lovers here? I love dogs. absolutely love dogs. And I think dogs, again, give us, um, give us just a great example of what it means to to, uh, to overlook an, a, an offense. I mean, how many times, think about it as, a, as, you know, as, a, as an owner of a, of a pet there, as it, how many times have you accidentally hurt your, your dog? Stepped on the paw, accidentally bumped in, and you hear this, Arr! you know, this little thing, and you're just, and, and what do you do? You know, you go, oh, come on, you know, you're just, you didn't mean to, you go down there, and what do they do every time? I mean, immediately, they just come riding up to you, they're, they're, they have forgotten they, you just stepped on them, right? You just stepped on them. It's like they totally forgot. They are jumping in your arms the next time. Maybe, 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 maybe for an animal, for this dog, this incredible thing that God made, maybe the relationship is more important than the offense. And maybe we could have the same thing. Maybe we could the same thing that, that, our, that the relationship, whatever it is, is even more important than the than the offense in life, and I, I, I you know, this is a, a story that I that I love. There was um, a a mule that fell into a dry well, 
and this is, and what I'm about to say is a lot easier said than done, okay? So I'm, I'm dealing with this just like everybody else is. He drew, went into a dry well, and they couldn't get, no matter what they did, they couldn't get this mule out of this dry well. So what they decided to do is just they were going to bury him. So they were taking loads of shov shovel loads and putting it down there. And every time the, the shovel load hit the, hit the mule, it shrugged it off and just stepped up. Put it again, shrugged it off, stepped up until it got higher and higher, and eventually the, the mule just walked out of the, of the well. And the same thing, maybe in life a lot of times, for most defenses, we can, if we're, you know, we can shrug it off and, and step, uh, step up. And the thing is that uh, refuse to take the bait. We know it's there. You know, just like a fish, a fish can't help that the, that the, the bait went in the, the pond, right? I mean, if bait happens, right? If you're a fish, bait's going to fall in there. But it can help whether it goes after the bait or not. It can, it can do that. And another, a few moments ago, I gave David as the poster child example of, of what not to do. Here's the poster child of him not, uh, of what he, what he did perfectly in here. There was a time that he was, you know, very offended and he didn't take the bait. It happened like this. Saul was trying to kill him. I mean, Saul was trying to take his life on many occasions, threw javelins at him, tried to get him pinned to the wall, tried to have whole armies go out to, to try to kill him. And one time, David and his men are hiding in a cave, and Saul, who is out trying to kill him with an army trying to kill him, goes into the cave to, to relieve himself. And while he's there doing his business, that his, uh, his uh, men whisper to him, now's your chance. I mean, man, you talk about vulnerable He's vulnerable right now. So, but, but David said, I will never do that. I will not touch the Lord's anointed. Uh, and, and here's this guy that had the bait right in front of him, and he said, this time I'm not taking the bait. Um, another thing is refuse to be used as one of Satan's flying monkeys. <laughs> if we've ever seen the uh, Wizard of Oz. Proverbs 17, 9. Listen to these words. He who covers over an offense promotes love. But whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. Every time we're offended, we have an option. We can either cover over the, uh, the offense, which promotes love, or we can repeat the matter and separate close friends. I don't know about you. I've done both of those a lot, you know. And what in my life, what I want to do is I want to be more of doing that. I want to be more cognizant and intentional about covering over the offense rather than repeating the, uh, the matter. And every time we cover over the offense, there's never a time I think we're more like God. And when we repeat the matter, there's probably more, never a time than we're more like the accuser of, uh, of Satan. So God help us when we've done that, and God help us become uh, better at doing the, the other thing. Uh, seeing the offense in light of what's really important. You know, um, imagine, imagine you're in a tornado. A tornado is coming towards your house. And you have a choice between between rescuing your TV or rescuing a child, which are you gonna do? It's, it's a, oh, wait, it's, it's a 70 inch, okay? And it's 4K and it's everything. If that changes anything, no, obviously every single time you're gonna rescue the, the child, right? Why? Because a child, a, a person is more important than a thing, always, always, always. What happens if we just realize that, that the relationship is more important than the offense, that the marriage is more important than the offense, that the relationship is more important than whatever the relative did, that the, that the relationship is more important than the, than the person at work who stabbed us in the back, that the relationship is more important, that all of the, there's something that's more important than being right. There's something more important than doing, than doing that, and that's that, that the relationship is the thing that makes life special. And it's also the thing that Satan attacks the most because he knows that. He knows, he knows that, that, that united we stand, divided we fall. He knows that, that, uh, that together we're going to really be something. And, but if he splits apart, if he just puts that wedge. So we just need to remember that there's something a lot more important than, than being right in the offense. Another thing is the offense with the person who offended you. What's our tendency to do? We talk to everybody but the person who offended us, right? Here's what the Bible says. If your brother sins against you, go and show him or her their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won your brother or sister over. And finally, here's this. Choose to forgive. I want you to understand, 
Forgiveness is not saying what they did was okay. Forgiveness is not saying that it didn't hurt you. Forgiveness is, is not saying that you don't have an incredibly good right to be offended. I'd say David had a pretty good right to be offended. I mean, if somebody's trying to kill you, I'm putting that at the top of the list for reasons to be, to be offended. But, uh, but here's, here's the thing. It's a choice, isn't it? It's saying it's a choice of our will of saying, I will not, uh, I will not hold this against you in the same way that Jesus Christ has not, has not held the, uh, the things against, uh, against me. You know, that the, the, the Bible says, bear with each other and forgive whatever, whatever grievance you have against one another, forgive in the same way that Christ has forgiven you. And if, Christ, if we've been forgiven for so much, heavens knows we can for, forgive as well. One of the heroes of my life is a woman by the name of Corey Ten Boom. Corey Ten Boom wrote The Hiding Place and was, in a, it was also a, a, a movie. And she was somebody who, uh, who, she and her family were hiding Jews in, uh, in protecting them from the Nazis uh, in, uh, in, in Holland in the, during World War II. And they got caught, and they got taken to Ravensbrück concentration camp. And, and there she and her sister, Betsy, uh, faced the worst uh, horrible things imaginable, including what she had to do is not only face that, but she had to watch her sister uh, die. And if there was ever a reason, if there was ever a person who had reason to be bitter and reason to be upset and reason to hold an offense, it was this, uh, it was Corey Ten Boom. But here's what she said. It was some time ago that I was in Berlin and there came a man to me and said, Ah, Mr. Boom, I am glad to see you. Don't you know me? And suddenly I saw that man. That was one of the most cruel outseers in concentration camp. And that man said, I have, I'm now a Christian. I have found the Lord Jesus. I read my Bible and I know that there is forgiveness for all the sins of the whole world. Also for my sins. I have forgiveness for the cruelties I have done. But then I have asked God grace for an opportunity that I could ask one of my very victims forgiveness and Fräulein Tambom will you forgive me and I could not I remembered the suffering of my dying sister through him but when I saw when I experienced that I could not forgive Suddenly I knew, I myself have no forgiveness, but I was not able, I could not, I could only hate him. And then I took one of these beautiful texts, one of these boundless resources, Romans 5.5, 5, and thank you, Father, that your love is stronger than my hatred and unforgiveness. That same moment, I was free. And I could say, brother, give me your hand. And I shook hands with him. And it was as if I felt God's love stream through my arms. You never touch so the ocean of God's love as that you forgive your enemies. Can you forgive? No. I can't either, but he can.